Hey guys, my name is Jade. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to call you guys up. This is episode two, season two. On today's menu, before we call you up, we actually are cooking up a matcha green tea latte. I'm so sorry if everything's a beverage. It's just hard to... I'm not really that good at cooking yet. Channel. I found a recipe on Pinterest, so that's what we're going to be following a lot. Y'all already know how it goes. I'm going to call the first caller, answer questions, and uh, sip some tea. Welcome to Cooking with Jade, while we talk about some serious topics. Hi, you're on the Ask Jade show. My name is Sergio and I'm from Houston, Texas. All right, Sergio, what's up? How can I help you? Um, I've been trying to like grow my YouTube channel and also my second Instagram page. Yeah. And I've been kind of like stuck on the second one. Okay, what's going on? Why is it stuck? Um, I guess because I'm not getting a lot of traction. and I do you think your audience likes your content? Do they give a shit? For my first page, I think they do. Um, you know, what's the problem on the second account that's holding you back? It's not public, it's private. So that's, I'm guessing that could be one of the problems. Why it's not getting a lot of exposure? Y yeah, that's probably it. Um, Why don't you just make it public? Probably just because I'm impatient. Um, Probably. <laughs> well, this is what I say, Sergio. It sounds like to me, how the fuck are people supposed to love your second account content if they can't see it? I know the idea about you post content only for the right amount of people and it's more secretive. But for your case, I don't think you have a distribution problem. I just think you forgot to turn your settings to public. Yeah, I'll try it. <laughs> Sergio fan club. Anyone who wants to start one for Sergio? I don't. I don't know if you guys can see. It's just. It's just getting clumpy. <laughs> Hi, you're on the Ask Jade Show. Hi. Marilyn from Wisconsin, what's up? How can I help you? There's too much. There's too many artists. And I have to like work 10 times as hard to get noticed because I'm an artist. You're, I totally see that yeah. frustration. <laughs> my biggest problem is trying not to get too down on myself, even if I work really hard on like a piece or something. Not getting noticed on like Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook, or right. um, Patreon. No, it's tough. I mean, here's my thing. It's like... When you are posting art, right? Because you're an artist, you create things that you love and you see. However, an audience or essentially like yeah. someone scrolling might not give a shit. Art is very personal. Yeah. And I don't know, have you heard the quote? This is this might be actually cool because I know you you create. So there's a quote that's like the birth of the audience is the death of the author. Typically people who are successful online, they basically make content that they love but they also kind of find content that people also give a shit about and they find that in between, kind of like a Venn diagram. But it's a little bit hard. I'm also trying to like do the few commissions at the same time. I'm trying to figure out like the perfect balance between like trying to grow my business, working on my current project. I don't think you have to pick one, one or the other. Have you ever thought about your social media, your commissions as a giant funnel where your awareness to get more commissions, you have to build your social is basically a funnel. Have you thought about that way or you don't see it that way? I just haven't thought about it that way. No, like it's being like collectively all helping at the same time yes. than just like individual things. Cool. Okay, first step, we got it. You know, as an artist, it's frustrating to know, like, okay, shit, like, this is my craft, but I also have to build the business side, which is boring. But it seems like to me, just think about it as a funnel. Your awareness is to get more commissions and then the bottom of your funnel. So once you kind of see it like that, fan art is an amazing idea. I love it. Marilyn, what I would do even better and step further, <laughs> the next steps after that is to just draw people that have your audience. And what you can do is segment their fans into your page. Hi. Solid. The real question, Marilyn, is do you like matcha? Of course I do. Oh, <gasps> you do? Super helpful. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Love you, Marilyn. You know, talking to Marilyn is super refreshing because I was in her place about a year ago. Like, I always thought I had to decide between YouTube or Instagram and my business and making money or school. And here's a damn truth, okay? It's not. You have to think about it as a giant funnel because how the fuck is your business going to run if you don't have awareness and customers? My parents, I love them so much. But I've been always told when I was younger that like I had to pick. Like I couldn't do everything I want. You know, I used to do YouTube videos with makeup, but it just made me happy and I was so frustrated because people would tell me like I had to pick one. You know, make money or you know, do your craft. But I think more than ever you can like, combine it. So I actually have a whole video about content marketing and how to build a funnel. I'll link it below if you guys want to watch it after. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut butter. I don't know the science behind it, but I have my nutritionist Autumn who recommended me to put this in smoothies and I love it. So shout out to you, Autumn. We have a video coming out together, so I'm super excited. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna blend it up. And as always, once I blend, make sure you give this video a like and we're gonna start blending with the blender saw. Like this video. You guys. 
You guys, you guys, this might not be a fail this time. Watch this, you guys. The key is to slow pour at the top and you get all the fucking foam. Look at the foam. We're gonna do our first impressions. And of course, at the very end of the video, I'll let you know my rating. Um, last week, it wasn't so good. It was like a five out of 10 stars. So let's see, matcha green tea latte with coconut butter. Hi, you're on the Ask Jade show. Oh my god, hi Jade. I'm Alisa, I'm from the Bay Area. My real question for you is, do you like matcha? Oh, I love matcha. Hey! Okay, so um, I'm like a food Instagrammer, and um, I branched out onto YouTube like maybe six months ago. Um, I watched like almost all your videos, so like I'm really using your advice and like tips and stuff. And I definitely think that it's been helping how to grow on YouTube. Alisa, I've seen actually your food account. It's very, you've been growing really well on Instagram. 20,000, oh, nice one. <laughs> okay, so you know, tell me your goal about YouTube. I think you're thriving on YouTube. What's what's your goal for maybe something you would say you want to reach by the end of this year? Um, by the end of this year? Oh, I don't know because I feel like YouTube growth is so unpredictable. Yes. Like with in Instagram, I can kind of make a prediction. Yes. But with YouTube, like it's so hard for me to even tell. Really? I'm a very, very small YouTuber. So mm. I feel like for me, it's very like up and down. Good. Um, You're I doing great though. Your YouTube views, they're good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think like recently it's been starting to pick up more, which like I'm really thankful. And like, I think some of my... Um, Hard work is starting to pay off. I, this is what I have to say. You're right about the YouTube being unpredictable. So here's the thing. For any small channel, it's okay failing or having low views because you seriously only need to be right once. So don't be afraid about failure or like you're doing a great job with posting twice a week. I feel like people think like you have to post consistently and then you're going to blow up. But no, it's really like you only need like three viral videos and that will take your channel to say like a hundred thousand. I think you're on the right track. I have a weird idea for you. I don't know okay. how much of this will work, but have you seen the video called drinking 45 liters of boba challenge? Oh my God, I did see that. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's really intense. <laughs> I think virality here, this, here's the thing, you're very, I'm just looking at your channel and you pick up a lot of keywords like San Jose, walkable foods, Instagrammable foods. Like this is very good keyword stuff. And this is what I would call evergreen related content. Like pe when people land on it, it's like almost like there's no really age to it. You know like how some challenges or, you know, trends, they, they last for a month and they're gone. No one really watches it. What you're doing is great. It's long-term evergreen content. Um, and it's actually something where it's good long-term, but you need that short-term little virals type stuff. And that shit is a weird ass stuff. That's like, you know, it's the fads, it's those trends, it's those boba challenges, it's those 10,000 calorie, it's like those type of videos. So what I always recommend, actually, I learned this from uh, my friend Sarah Dici. She's also a YouTuber and she's like, yeah, I always do a video that's one for me, one for you. One video that's evergreen or like just stuff that I like and one for you, which is going to be a please to the larger market. So I would maybe, because I see you're picking up so good on SEO, which is actually the first advice I give you. So Elisa, you're kind of more advanced. So this is where I think you need to look for trends and be the first one to pounce on it. Basically, you want to look for the next spicy noodle challenge and then be the one of the first people. Do you know what that video is for you next? How do you really go about like knowing those trends mm -hmm. when it kind of just seems like, oh, you just have to be at the right place at the right time and like know, you know, when, when that kind of thing is like popular. It's a hundred percent luck. What I think is I just like to browse my recommended because I know if YouTube's recommending to me, they're going to recommend it to other people. So, I mean, there's really no mathematical formula. My best recommendation for you is to really pry on those recommended videos and see why they're popping. I think trying to be more experimental instead of food tours will help you at least get that wider audience and that shock value. Oh yeah, that's like a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't want you to chug like 45 liters of boba, <laughs> but like if that takes, let me know and I'll share it with the Darmination and we'll watch it. If YouTube growth is that meaningful to you, you're gonna do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I might end up in the hospital. <laughs> Even better, that content. I'm joking. Please don't. Please don't, Lisa. Please don't. So I recommend just cutting, focusing 50-50 on evergreen and vir virality content. Okay, gotcha. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm, I feel like I've been wa waiting to be on the Ashley show for so long and I'm finally on it and I like can't 
can't. I'm like, my mind's blanking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. When I'm in SF, we're gonna grab matcha, okay? All right, Alisa, I hope this is helpful. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye. Woo! Okay, so I'm super excited about this episode. Not only do we have Alisa, who's actually someone that uh, has been following my channel for a long time. I've been seeing your comments, Alisa. Thanks so much. Your support is super meaningful to me. I do notice when you guys comment, I literally like remember your names and like I know who you guys are. Thanks so much. Like I remember you when I was at like almost like 50,000 subscribers. So I uh, thank you, Elisa, for your support. Kind of wrapping things up. I actually also will link below my video with Sarah Dici about how to grow on YouTube with evergreen and virality content. We have a whole series about that. It'll be in the description box. But just to sum things up, I think it's super important in the beginning to do SEO related content and to grow. But if you're hitting a market cap or you're hitting a wall where you're not growing any further, think about those crazy innovative ideas because this is where I have to say, I think so many people in the beginning start with SEO and like doing keywords, which is like, you know, content that people search for. So instead of just doing a vlog, you do a how-to because people search for certain things, right? But there's a certain point where you just need to think out of the box, do the crazy. Marketing's always changing. So if we're not constantly innovating, then all we're doing is recycling old content and we're not really being innovative and 10xing. We're just growing by that little 10%. And like I said before, YouTube is not about just incremental growth all the time. Sometimes you have to do the viral video to take your channel to the next level. And same with Instagram. It's not like you post consistently and you're just gonna grow 10%. No, sometimes it's just that one video that goes 10X and that's when you get your moment. And you don't have to be right all the time. You literally only need to be right once. So don't be afraid of failure, you know? If you're not being able to take that first step, fail fast, break things, then you're not truly innovating because innovation requires that chance of failure. So I know a lot of us are perfectionists, we're creators, we're artists, but we need to be able to innovate and take that leap of faith, even if that means failure. So with that being said, I hope this gives you an opportunity to take action, even if you don't feel like it. Let me know your thoughts and comment below a question and we'll do another episode together. If you wanna be on the next Ask Jade Show, all you gotta do is comment below and check the link below for the description box to sign up. All right guys, um, thanks so much for calling. I genuinely, okay, so to be honest, I'm gonna rate this matcha latte a six out of 10 stars. The reason why it's a six is I fucked it up and basically it's a little bit too strong for me. So I'm gonna add some milk and sip it on my way home and enjoy the rest of my day. All right, just kidding. I'm gonna actually go back to work because um, we have a lot of client calls and meetings to run for PBJ app. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love you guys so much. Thank you for watching today's episode and tag me on your Instagram story, post notifications on, subscribe. All right, see ya.